Hello. All right, we're live here. Okay. So we're going to go over a couple tenant transfers. We're going to start with the PT. We go to the FDL, longest or brevis, or brevis the longest, FHL, tipping at, and then at the very end, if we have time, uh, we'll go over a brostrum. So to start, I just marked out the medial mal, navicular tuberosity, ankle joint, and the fibula. But for the PT, where you're in a where your navicular tuberosity is, you start down here to get to your PT. Then your second one for, this will be for drop foot, your second one is about 10 centimeters above the medial malleolus, which is almost equivalent to my hand. So, and you wanna go just medial to that crest there. That's where you'll, you'll find the, the tendon. The next step is you have to go through the syndesmosis to bring it anteriorly. So you kind of feel for the tibial crest there. Just go a little bit lateral to that. Coming up there. Up there. And then you can insert it at the lateral cuneiform, inter intermediate cuneiform, or even the cuboid, um, depending on how much deformity you're expecting or have. Probably be around here. So, start with the dissection. Okay, pick up. And you want to get as much length as you can with these tendon transfers because a big problem is that they can be short and then you're stuck going like to the navicular, which happened to me before. So here's the PT tendon and it's a pretty, pretty wide tendon because of all the insertion uh, locations. Okay, this is the same thing for a kidner too. So you kind of just, you find the tendon there, right over the tuberosity, start reflecting it, um, essentially medial, and then go more planar. And once you feel like you've got Enough, enough loosened up, you can go ahead and transect it. Is there any mats? And there's just a lot of attachments here. Okay, so now you want to go ahead and tag it with the suture. Which, is there a needle driver? There you go. You can go ahead and do the crack out or whatever that you want to do. Which I'll show you guys the crack out. You want to use more like, a, this is 3O Vicryl, but you want to use like 2O Ethabond or, or Fiberwine or something a little bit stronger. And kind of clean up, 
clean up the edge here. So I'll take those scissors. Okay, so for the way I like to do it, Okay, so you start by going through the distal tip. Well, one of you guys hold traction on the tendon. And then bring the suture about halfway. And then you just start going about halfway through the tendon and looping it all around. Is that a big, let's use a bigger sure. one. Yeah. yeah. What is that? The PDS. Okay. Halfway that way, so when you're actually anchoring your tendon, you have suture to pass it through the interference screw or bio tail adhesive screw. So you start to loop it through, Oops. and you want to lock these. Raise it up a little bit there. And you want normally like at least four on each side. Just for the sake of time, I'm just going to do two. And then once you go and lock it, you have a couple of stitches going up, you go all the way th across, and then you do the same thing going down. I should get good bites of that tendon too, so it doesn't rip out. And then you go ahead and just come out the other side. And you have your, your crack out. So we're gonna cut the suture off here. And we'll move up more proximally. So, so 10 centimeters high. So your, your PT will be right behind the medial crest. And if say you're doing like a PT release for a stroke patient, same area, or like say you're doing a TTC fusion and you gotta release that, you go up here and you just kinda get, can do a percutaneous release. Some retraction. So right there. Oops. Open up the tendon sheath.
And sometimes you, this can be really bulbous and tough to get through. So kind of find the tendon sheath and just spread a little bit. This is not uncommon. So why don't you pull on that deal too? If you're not quite sure too, what we can be doing is as we're pulling proximally, yep. when we're pulling on the FDL, we can actually see distally. Can you grab the FDL tendon there yep. and just pull and show how you can check just to identify Relax the... Here. Yep. So right in here. Here's the other tendon. Yeah, so you always, before you do something like this, so you want to be checking that. So then we know it's the FDL tendon. Good. Okay. And to get it through the syndesmosis, sometimes you have to clear out some of this muscle belly because it's, it's just really tight and you don't want to open up the syndesmosis to the point where you de destabilize it. And it's okay that you're losing some of the muscle, it's fine. And a lot of times these tendon transfers are just for static, um, static support, especially with the amputations. Not as much dynamic, but when you do a tendon transfer, how much uh, muscle strength do you lose? One, three. Yep. So we gotta bring it through the synesmosis at this level. So. Why does she wanna do it that high? Is that where the perfect, the opening is on? The artery. Right. Um, and you wanna do it above the um, retinaculum too, so that way mm -hmm. it can tunnel under the retinaculum versus go over the top and get a bow string. Get some retraction. There's curl fascia. You have to move some of the muscles around in tendons. Just find a good interval to kind of get through it. So 
So do you have any deep retractors? The Army Navy? Yeah, yeah. It's up a little bit left. Dude, that's a little longer. Nope. Okay. Go ahead. So the synosmosis is way down in here. So right there. So I'm gonna fix you guys here. So there. I'm gonna have you hold up like that. There you go. You have to open up the synosmosis a decent amount because you got to get that whole thickness in there. You don't want it impinged, but you also want to balance it where you're not doing too much. So when you go to grab this tendon, you want to really hug the tibial bone because you don't want to hit the neurovascular bundle or impinge any other vital structures. And so you bring your hem hemostats through, you're able to grab your suture at the other end. Pull it through. There you go. Now we're, we have enough length to get there, so we're doing good on length. We may even have too much, which is which is a good problem to have. Okay. So now we make our last incision here. What muscle belly am I running into right here? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And before you do this, you should kind of check on flora where you're at. Sometimes those midfoot bones um, can be deceiving on where they are, especially when you first start doing surgery. Retraction. <clears throat> I'm gonna have you grab that muscle belly right there. So we happen to run into a neurovascular bundle there. Perfect. So we'll make sure we'll pull that to the side. So I'm making my spot to where I'm going to put the anchor. Nice. Feels like either the cuboid or the lateral caniform. Okay. So now take you know a big curved stat or something like that, and you want to go inferior to the fascia. So I can feel my fascia layer right here, and go underneath it, and make a tunnel. And kind of like Dr. Clarity said, the reason why you want to go underneath it is so you don't get bowing of the tendon. Like this is the appearance you'll get of the tendon when it's actually working if, you, if you're above it. But some articles say they go above it anyway, so it's kind of surgeon's preference. A lot of brute strength for this procedure. <laughs> okay, you have curve stat. Long one. Realistically, you'd want to get this curve step all the way up there so that I can open my two prongs and then attach the or insert the two suture and pull it down. I didn't know I was getting a workout in today. <laughs> Okay. 
there's that. So see how my Mets are coming in there? That's what you want to do with your stats. Then you have someone open up the, the two heads of the, or the tip of the stat, and then you can insert the suture right there. So with ours, we can just do it above. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like above, like this. Yeah, just for sure. Okay, so we'll now need the power for the interference oh. screw. So with this, you start with a cannulated wire. Then you do a drill. You can use this for your K wire. Mm -hmm. Is that for the K wire? Okay. And you determine the size of the drill by how wide your tendon. And this is pretty thick, so I'm going to trim this down. Normally it's like a seven millimeter or six, sometimes eight. Okay. Do you want to measure it? Yeah. Do you only have a five though? Yeah, okay. a seven. So seven. Well, I have a five that's really small, but I only use a seven. Yeah, I'm going to have to yeah. tension in. Or that, let me have to, there we go. Okay, so the sizer, do we have the sizer? So with this one, you kind of just insert it through the sizer, and you kind of see how far it goes up. So this one's stopping at a six. It's a real... We would normally pick a six. We only have a five, so I'm going to trim it down a little bit more. I have a seven. We have to really hold long. that again. Really oh, you have a seven? It's really long. We'll use that. We'll use that. So then you take your nice. your wire, and these wires have this loop at the end, if you can see that. And that's where you're going to be passing your suture through. And you want to take this all the way through. So you'd be doing this under floral to make the right make sure you don't go into a joint. And now we would take the drill and go over this. So this is a cannulated drill. And depending on the length of your anchor, you'll determine on how far you drill. So how long is this 25 one? Twenty five? Hello. Okay, with black decker. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now that you got your hole, you can take your suture, pass it through the loop, and then you can take your drill. Actually, this is loose, so I can just pull it through. And then have someone take a hemostat or really get a good, good hold on the planner area. Roll this up. And then you want to make sure you get the right position that you want and sink it into the hole. So this is a little small just because we didn't have the right drill, but this should go into the hole pretty well. And if you if you can't get it in there, just trim some of the tendon down a little bit more. So once you get this tight and into the hole, then you take your interference screw or your anchor, which is yep, right here, the G force okay. and adhesive screw. And you pretty much just let me see. Holes there. 
you pretty much just lock lock the tendon in there and you'd have someone holding the position keeping the tendon in there with the right tension and you put it all the way in to its flush and then you're able to just pull out at that point you have a good hold but my tendon didn't fit in so that's what it would do okay so there's the first one any questions with that tendon transfer no? I think so. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the screw made out of? Jordan? Say it again. What's, what's the, the screw what's made, made out of? Out? It's a peak implant. Okay. Probably at the, at the ketone implant. It's very common for uh, So while we're here. Yeah, while we're here, we'll do the FDL. So we'll say you're doing your. Never mind, Dan's take it over. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, so in some flat foot cases where you want to spare joints or um, have a round like a stage two, um, you know that they have a bad PT10, PT10 and whether it's MRI um, or just general physical exam. So, what you can do is you can do a FDL tendon transfer. Did you already cut the PT? I did. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what you'll have is you'll have the PT tendon here, which a funny little, I guess, story kind of about that is if you have a bad tendon and you want to get rid of it or you're thinking about whether to save it, I had a few attendings that called it a uh, turd in the shorts. So if you don't want that in your shorts, you might as well take it out. So um, let me get a little retraction in here. Oops. So going down right below the PT tendon, you'll come in and what you'll have is your FDL tendon. If I could find it here. So a lot of times you're going to have a sheath right above it. So just going down below and if need be kind of flexing and moving your hallux to better locate it and using just a finger to feel. So I can feel that's right on my index finger there. So. Go ahead and hold that. We got another send. There we go. So oftentimes using a send to grab it. And if you need to, you can incise this kind of thicker caps a little bit more. So then you're kind of opened up right there to that tendon underneath. If you're unsure, once again, take FDL, move it. It's a good aver limb so it doesn't move as well. But this would be your FDL tendon. So grabbing this, um, some people will actually take um, like an unclogger for the um, suction tubing um, and they will bring it down and follow it very deep. Um, I've found that if you can take bring the foot inverted as much as possible and either you or your assistant whoops sorry about that taking and cutting back towards a safe zone whether you use a 15 or you use a, a scissors but cutting that tendon so now having that tendon let's take either a 
Alice, most likely, or anything. This will work. So, grabbing that end of that tendon, and we have like a whip stitch. Just suture. <clears throat> okay. The so, um, so in this case, what we'll do is improvise a little. We'll kind of create our own little whip stitch. So starting giving yourself enough tendon, this is probably a little bit excessive right here, but there's all sorts of ways to do this. Like you can see that Dana and I just did two totally different techniques. So either way. So somebody want to cut this little guy? There we go. So what you could do is, I guess another little teaching thing is doing a retubularization. So making this a smidge smaller. So what that can do is bury this knot. So in the event that you're somewhere that you don't have a whip stitch, You can kind of take Don't grab needles with your fingers So you see uh, that's kind of bringing those edges of that tendon together in the center. That's exactly how you retubalize, like you said. So you do that often with peroneal tendons, particularly your peroneus brevis. You'll see flat, even if you don't see a tear, and that's something you want to fix. So you're doing like lateral ankle stabilizations and examining those tendons. So as I'm kind of getting here towards the end, running out of tendon, so what I want to do is go ahead and tie this off and trying to get it kind of centered. Have you just cut this one? Yeah, you can cut it more. Perfect. So you get to this point and you kind of notice uh, these ends aren't as nice and tight as I want. Um, like Dr. Blanton said, you can either kind of trim these down, which would be fine, or what you can do is kind of grab them and bring them together a little bit to allow for better passage through the soon to be suture anchor hole. So. Well, somebody cut my knot. You're fired. <laughs> so, in the event that that happens, don't worry. You can always throw another little knot here. Just cut this one all the way down. Good. So what I can do is I can take this, although it's making my tendon a little bit bulkier than I wanted. Just going ahead and grabbing that end. So I'm recreating what I had, which easier said than done.
So there's always ways to dig yourself out of holes. So now I've got this tendon that's retubularized. Uh, I'm ready to go through our soon to be drill hole. What do we have for uh, drill here? We have a five millimeter and a seven millimeter. Five millimeter is only 10 millimeters in depth. The seven millimeter is 25 in depth. Okay, so what you always wanna do is you wanna, go ahead and cut this so nobody pokes themselves. So using your tendon sizer, so simply going on and kind of going all the way down. So you see that it's kind of getting tight around a five there. So we have a five millimeter um, by 10 millimeter uh, interference screw. And what we can do with that is you have to think it's five millimeters and my tendon's five millimeters. Plus I'm gonna be shoving a uh, interference screw with this in that hole. So I'm gonna be having plenty of space within it. So next what you're gonna do is you wanna be able to feel your talus and your navicular. So right here, I can see that I have my navicular and you would have already taken uh, the PT tendon off this. So you know you have a good um, point to go from. Uh, what do we have for like guide wire then? Right next to you. I have another one. Okay. So what we'll do, and this has a little end to it for suture passing. And you wanna kind of find that tuberosity on your navicular, but you have to kind of be aware of all your surrounding joints, be aware of the actual shape of the navicular and how the um, tailor head articulates with that because it curves in, so this joint itself is uh, concave. So if I'm just gonna go straight into it, I'm gonna go right through into the tailor head and cause a whole bunch of other issues. So you wanna be aiming kind of away from the TN joint, and you also wanna be thinking in a superior to inferior. So I wanna be going a little bit more superior with this. So um, what you can do is you can start going back and forth and I oscillate just because it's a little less heat that I create um, within the bone itself. And you're actually gonna be coming up and out of the skin. So now that you have that through, you can go ahead and use that to um, drill over so we will use our drill here. And that first line is our, what I believe is our 10 millimeter, yep. So bearing it down to right there, obviously I wouldn't be drilling and stopping like this, but just to kind of go over things, um, I wanna be able to make sure that that 10 millimeter anchor is gonna fit in there. So knowing that, I can go ahead and take my suture and a good way is to use like a mosquito and literally just come through just like that grabbing this and voila so somebody wants to grab with a wire driver go ahead and pull that through Oscillate. So go in reverse now. Okay. 
Go in reverse. Another reverse. There you go. Okay. Can you pull it out now? There you go. Keep pulling. Nope. So that happens. It's okay. Once again, you got it one hole drilled. If you can't find that, to be continued. So. This all guy. This part break. You got another suture passer, Jordan? Yeah. We need to get through the back if you can't get it through there. Turn a little bit for me. There we go. This tendon's been through a lot already. Mm -hmm. So once again, using a mosquito or a stat, simply doing that. And this time we'll just be a little gentler. So with this, you're gonna to want to invert the foot and make sure, let me see a pick up. So make sure your tendon's kind of finding its way into the hole right away. Um, just makes life a little bit easier. So go ahead and invert the foot as much as you can, which is obviously difficult in a stiff cut ever, but And then same thing with like Dr. Blant was saying, grabbing a snap because this fiber wire, if you're using fiber wire or heavy suture like this, will give you give you a cut or break. So um, we have well, that broke all the way at the bottom. So we already have our tendon in there as much as it's going to go with our 10 millimeter that we drilled. So we could go ahead and put this in. And if you want to, you can try and shove it in a little bit more, but we've already got that much in there. So. You wanna make sure you're giving some decent pressure and counter pressure. You can see that it's within there, the tendon's in there. And now for closure, you could come in with the capsule that you had over here before and close it directly right over the top of that. So that would be our FDL transfer. All right, that's it for today. Um, we'll take this down and post it on YouTube. Uh, sorry, we're watching this. So. Uh, mm -hmm. Thanks.